Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on circular and satellite motion. The topic of this video is Newton's Second Law and Circular Motion. And we want to know how can you combine a free body diagram, Newton's Second Law, and circular motion equations to solve a physics word problem involving moving in circles. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. F net equal MA problems associated with moving in circles will rely upon the use of the equations for speed, acceleration, and net force. I discussed these equations in a previous video and left links to the video in the description section of this one. The equation for speed is V equal 2 times pi times R divided by big T. R here is the radius of the circle and big T is the time it takes to go around the circle once. We call that the period. The equation for acceleration is A equal V squared divided by R and the equation for F net is equal to F, is F net equal MA or F net equal M times V squared divided by R. The solution of these problems relies on the use of a free body diagram in which we draw individual forces and size them according to which one is biggest. Like in this case, the tension force is bigger than the gravity force. Then we go F net equal MA. The F net is the vector sum of all the forces. For this free body diagram, that would be F tension minus F grab. The A can be found from the equations I just spoke of. We'll see five examples of the use of these equations, the free body diagram, and Newton's second law in order to solve circular motion problems. In our first example, a 945 kilogram car is making a turn with a speed of 22.3 meters per second. The radius of the turn is 56.4 meters and we want to know the friction force that acts upon the car. Like any problem in physics, I begin by writing down what I know and what I'm looking for. What I know here is the mass of the car, the speed of the car, and the radius of the car. I express these in terms of the variables used within the equations that I'm going to be using. I'm looking to find the force of friction. The next step is to write is to draw a free body diagram for the car in the location shown. If I think about that, there's going to be a gravity force down, and since the car is on a surface to support its weight, there's a normal force acting upwards. But what's the inward centripetal force here? Well, it's got to be the force of friction. After all, on an icy day, you could turn your wheels, but the car would go off straight because there'd be no friction. So friction must be the inward force. That's what helps the car move in a circle. So I draw it shown off to the right towards the center of the circle. Now from this free body diagram, I notice that the only force not being balanced is the force of friction. That's the net force. And I also know that the F net is equal to mv squared over r. Since I know values of m, v, and r, I can calculate the net force value. It comes out to be 8330 newtons. And since F net is equal to F friction, I've just solved the problem for what is the friction force. Our second example is about a bucket of water tied by a rope and whirled in a vertical circle. I know the mass of the bucket and the radius of the circle, and my focus is on the top of the loop. I know the speed there is 4.28 meters per second. I want to determine the tension of the rope. So I write down what I know. I know mass, speed, and radius, and what I'm looking for. F tension. Then I draw my free body diagram for the bucket at the top of the loop. If I think about that, gravity will always be down. Since there's a rope tied to the hand held below the bucket at that point, that rope's pulling down on the bucket, so there's two downward forces here, F grab and F tension. And because of that, when I write the F net expression, I'm going to write it as F grab plus F tension. I add since they're both in the same direction. Then I'm going to rearrange this equation so that I can use it to solve for F tension. F tension is equal to F net minus F grab. If I can find F grab and I can find F net, I can solve for this problem. So F grab is always equal to mg and since m is known, I can calculate F grab by multiplying the m times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And I can calculate the F net by going mv squared over r. When I do my math, I get about 22.856 newtons for the F net. Now I can use the equation to solve for F tension. I go F net minus F grab, and I end up with 9.53 newtons. 
Example 3 is like example 2 with a bucket of water whirled in a vertical circle, but this time we're focusing on the bottom of the loop where the speed is 7.81 meters per second. Begin by writing down what you know, expressing the known information in terms of the variables of our equations. Write down what you're looking for, the force of tension, and then proceed with your free body diagram for the bucket at the bottom of the loop. When it's at the bottom of the loop, gravity will once more be downwards as it always is, but tension will be upwards towards the center of the circle where the hand is at. So the rope's pulling up on the bucket of water, and that tension force must be much greater than the force of gravity because we need net inward force. When I go to write my F net expression, I'm going to write F net equal F tension minus F grab. Always the force in the direction of the acceleration minus any that go the opposite direction. Now I can rearrange this equation to solve for F tension. F tension is equal to F net plus F grab. Now I can solve for F grab the way I always do, M times G. I can solve for F F net by going mv squared over r, and then I can take my values of F net and F grab and substitute it into this equation I've created from the free body diagram. F tension is equal to F grab plus F net, and that comes out to be 89.4 newtons. Now it's worth noting that this value for tension is much greater than it was in example two for the analysis at the top of the loop. At the bottom of the loop, it's greater for two reasons. First, the speed is greater because the bucket of water has sped up as it's traveled downwards. And second, tension must overcome the outward force of gravity and still have enough left over in order to have net inward force. Example 4 is a bit more complicated. It's about an airplane pilot that's making a loop-the-loop. -loop. and We're focusing on the bottom of the loop. We know the mass of the pilot and we know the radius of the loop is 68 meters. And we're asked, what speed must the pilot be moving in order for the normal force to be four times her weight? So here's what I know. I know the mass of the pilot, I know the radius of the, of the, of the circle, and I know that the normal force equal four times the weight. Now if you think about weight, it's m times g. So I wrote f norm equal four times mg. Now I'm looking for what speed must the pilot have for this to be true. So I begin with my free body diagram. For the bottom of the loop, where the gravity is always down, but the normal force is up in large, in fact, four times the down force. Then I write my F net expression. It's equal to the force in the direction of the acceleration minus any that goes the opposite way. So F net is equal to F norm minus F grab. But remember F norm is four times M times G and F grab is always M times G. So I'm gonna rewrite this equation as F net equal four MG minus MG, which when you do the math is three MG. Now I also know that F net is equal to mv squared over r. Now I know m, v, and no, m and r, and I'm looking to find the v. That's my unknown. So I'm going to rewrite this equation as mv squared over r is equal to F net, which I've already determined is 3mg. So now I'm going to do two steps of algebra on this equation. First, I'm going to divide both sides by m. That cancels m from the equation. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by r, which puts the v squared by itself on one side of the equation. The result looks like this. v squared is equal to 3 times g times r. I know the value of g, and I know the value of r, so I should be able to solve for the speed. I'm going to take my next algebra step of square root both sides. That gives me v on the left side is equal to the square root of 3gr on the right side. Now I can take my calculator out and do my substitution and take the square root of 3 times 9.8 times 68 and I get my value for v of 45 meters per second. In our most difficult example yet, I have a bucket of water being whirled in a horizontal circle. 
I know the mass of the bucket, the radius of the circle, and the speed at which the bucket's moving. I'm asked to calculate the tension in the rope and the angle that the rope makes with the horizontal. If you ever seen this occur, what you know is that the bucket of water hangs below where the hand is held. So if the hand is held here and you're whirling the bucket, because of the weight of the bucket, it's below where the hand is. So the rope extends diagonally and not horizontally, even though the bucket moves in a horizontal plane. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram with gravity straight down and tension at an angle to the horizontal. Because it's at an angle to the horizontal, it has two components, an fx and an fy component. And I'm looking to calculate the angle theta here in the diagram along with the value of the tension force. Now from this free body diagram, I can reason two things. First, the f net is the horizontal component of tension. It's the fx value in the diagram. And fy must balance f gravity. Because I know these two things, I can solve for fx and fy. After all, the fx would be equal to f net mv squared over r. I can calculate that since mv and r are known. And I can calculate fy since it's equal to f gravity or m times g. So I go mass times 9.8 and I now have my value of fy along with fx. Now if you inspect the free body diagram, you can reason that fx and fy are sides of a right triangle with f tension being the hypotenuse. So I can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for f tension. fx squared plus fy squared equal f tension squared and I can solve for f tension as shown. Now, I have f tension, fx, and fy, and I want to calculate theta. If you look back at that right triangle again, the side opposite theta is fy, and the side adjacent theta is fx. So the tangent of theta is equal to fy divided by fx. Theta is therefore the inverse tangent of fy divided by fx. Pull out your calculator, make sure it's set to degrees, and solve for the value of theta. It comes out to be 18 point nine degrees. If I were to summarize the approach to these problems, it would go something like this. First, read the problem carefully and identify what you know expressed in terms of the variables of the equation. Identify what you're looking for and then draw a free body diagram. From the free body diagram, write an f net expression, something like f net equal f tension minus f grab. Then express the acceleration of f net equal ma in terms of the variables v, r, and t, whatever is applicable. Then plot Plot out a strategy for taking what you know and solving for what you're looking for. At that point, you must perform your algebra, do your substitutions, pull out your calculator, and solve for the unknown. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help me out by giving me a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a very conceptual concept builder about drawing free body diagrams, a minds on physics mission that steps you through the solution of problems, a calculator pad problem set where you'll find problems, answers, and audio guided solutions, and finally a tutorial page that looks much like this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.